We're in northern Thailand on Doi Sithep Pui mountain and we are sitting in our research nursery where we learn how to grow native forest tree species. Forest restoration means trying to put back a forest ecosystem which is as similar as possible to the original forest ecosystem that may have been present before deforestation occurred. We try to, first of all, make sure the trees survive and grow. Secondly, we're looking to create forest structure, so we like many different layers in our forest canopy, and this provides the niches for different plant and animal species to come in and colonise those niches. And lastly, we're looking for ecological functioning, which means things like the photosynthesis of the trees, the cycling of the nutrients, watershed services, and especially these days carbon storage in the trees to mitigate climate change. These days, forests don't restore themselves because human beings are preventing them from restoring themselves. So one major factor in this part of the world where we have a dry season are the annual fires which sweep across the hillsides and they burn all the young seedlings. Cattle also nibble at the tree seedling. And then there's just the sheer lack of trees producing seeds and most of them are dispersed by animals. So the hunting has meant that a lot of those animals are now no longer present in sufficient numbers to actually transfer seeds from remaining bits and pieces of natural forest into these um, huge deforested areas. So unless somebody goes out and does something very deliberate, we cannot rely on these natural regeneration mechanisms any longer. And the question then is, what to do and the function of our unit has been from the beginning to try and figure out how to put the forest back in a fairly cost effective way. Process to produce the seedlings. First we conducted our phenology study so we have to know when is the suitable time to collect the seeds and then our staff will go out and collect the seeds and they will germinate the seeds here and then after that they will transfer the seedlings from the germination trays into the plastic bag and rest them until they reach the optimum size which is about 30 to 50 centimeters because if they are too small they will not be able to survive during the first dry season if they are too big, that will be so difficult for us to transfer them from the nursery to the planting site. So they got to be some optimum size, which from our experiment is about 30 to 50 centimeters. We use the soil from the nearby area because we hope that we can conserve microorganisms in the soil as well. The most important thing in the nursery is the knowledge because before we started our nursery, we don't know how to propagate our native species. We have transferred the knowledge here to three major parts of Thailand. Even though we don't have exactly the same species, but the method, we can use that to other parts of Thailand as well. The genus that we're really interested in is called Ficus. And the good thing is that they have a very, very dense root system. So they can penetrate really very degraded soils. And the second thing is they produce figs. And animals love to eat figs. And as they're eating the figs, they are uh, pumping out seeds the other end. And they will come up and they're the next generation of trees. And that's really what you want. At the New York Climate Change Conference last year, the United Nations set this target of 350 million hectares that should be restored to forest by the year 2030, which is only 15 years away. That's an area the size of India. Our solution to this problem is to start automating. We have to move to the drone age because drones can do that kind of work, but who knows in the future what avenues we might go down to to make sure that at least we have some kind of forest ecosystem coming back.